All right, guys, we're going to do a fun one here today. We've been doing a lot of studies on the Burtek force plates, and we see that hitters usually in one or two of these three different vectors have a preferred way of creating speed, either through vertical force, horizontal force, torque force, or a combination of two of those three. When I watched this video that just popped up recently of Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig, two of the best of all time, it dawned on me immediately how these two great hitters created speed in two very different ways. And we're going to go over that here today in a fun little video analysis. We're going to start with Ruth here on the left. Ruth already starts in a very coiled position, slightly staggered so he's closed off. And you can see right at the beginning here, one of the things with both of these guys that really impressed me was the way they take pitches. It's something that we impress upon our, our professional hitters today. The way you take a pitch says a lot about your sequence. So watch in this first example of Ruth, in this closed off position, he creates a lot of horizontal force forward, but you'll see him coil his hips. And we see the massive amount of coil that he gets in his lower body. You can think right away that he's going to create pretty good torque force. And you're going to see that here. But the way they take pitches, he shuts it down right there. So what I mean is, these guys have the intent of hitting everything. And you're going to see in their takes, they're hitting until they're not. And they shut it down late because their hands are the last thing, the last thing to fire in the sequence. So Ruth's style is to create both horizontal force because he starts his feet together, a very large move out towards the pitcher, and torque force. So you see he'll coil his hips and his torso even more, closing himself off on the way out to the pitcher. Because he has such a large lower body stride action, the hands and the bat will tilt away from him to match that action. If I have a large stride action, I'm going to have a large hand action too. You can see how closed off he is with the shoulder and striding across his body. When we see players do this on the force plate, a stride across will often produce 160 to 180 newtons of force. That's a ton. So you can see him blocking himself off in this style sends energy up the chain really fast and creates a fast torso rotation. Well, why is this important for Ruth? It's in one extremely important way. Because he does have some length in his swing. You'll see the rear el elbow lead longer here than what you'll see traditionally of big league hitters of today. You'll see this in a lot of the swings. So Ruth, you know, is going to be pull side dominant because of this. And when we went back and looked at his spray charts, what ones that do exist, you'll find that the majority of his home runs were hit to the pull side, and that's no surprise. So for a player to stride across his body this much, that means that energy has to be sent to the torso, and the torso's angular speed has to be tremendously fast in order to catch the upper body up and get it connected to be able to pull the baseball on balls that are even middle away. And you'll see that example right here as he gets a ball away from him, and this is going to be a rollover ground ball to the pull side. And that's going to happen occasionally because you go back and look at that, you'll see that that length in his swing is present. We rewind it here. You see how the upper body closed off, diving in, blocking off, creating that fast angular speed to the torso. We have just a little bit of length here of the rear elbow leading the hands longer than you typically see, or what you're, longer than what you're going to see with Gehrig's swing even. So you're going to get a good shot and look at two of these takes here. You'll see that horizontal motion that he has forward. Tremendous momentum to the pitcher, shutting it down. So still under control in the upper body, despite the great speed forward and thrust forward of the lower body. There you can see those torque forces in full effect. So much so as he strides across, dives in, and then gets around that front leg. You see how the back leg kicks behind him as he completes rotation of his hips all the way around. Now the two most important swings come here at the end that are a very good visual of what we're talking about with Ruth. And here's one of them. This ball again away from him. We said he's going to be pull side dominant because of the longer arc that he has in his swing. Strides across, balls away from him. So I'm going to reach and roll around that one. 
So the end result of this is Babe Ruth got his hand stung. Yep, that hurt. So a ball away from him, he would be susceptible to. If he could get that ball in the air, if he could get the ball in the air that way, he's still strong enough, swings a heavy enough bat, enough force behind him that he could get balls out of the park, but he would be susceptible to the rollover right there. But this last swing is also very telltale of Ruth, where I mentioned earlier that he could create tremendous angular velocities. And on this particular pitch in, something happened that was different. He shortened up. He tightened his turn. So what that tells me, creating torque in his lower body, closing both his hips off, getting torque force around the rear hip, the way he was coiling his hips, and then diving in, even with his torso, and then blocking the front leg, I said, would create better angular speeds up to the torso, which means on an inside pitch, you would think a hitter with a longer arc would be susceptible to that. Not in this case, because you can see in this frame right here, Ruth is in a much tighter position, a much tighter slot than any of the ones we saw previously. In fact, he's connected on this one. So on the inside pitch, he stays connected. The arms are still bent at the point of contact. You see how both arms are bent there. And you can also see the trajectory of the ball here on this inside pitch. Likely, as Ruth walks away on this one, this is a homer. And that takes us into the way Lou Gehrig created speed. And it was different for Lou. Lou, too, created horizontal force, but it was more direct. And some of this, the video that we watched from the catcher's view, Lou had more of a direct stride, more directly to the pitcher. But he also had a more traditional sequence swing of what you would see today. Yeah, the finish was a lot different because he finished so low, but the beginning portions of the swing were shorter than Ruth's. Thus, he had the ability to hit very easily to all fields. Gehrig, another example of a player with a long stride action, thus a longer hand action, the pump away, very aggressively creating horizontal intent forward to the pitcher and shutting it down when he needed to. On this particular pitch, this ball away from him, this is what I mean about getting sequenced in a tighter turn. You'll see the hand pump, stride action and hand action matching up. I would call this like a later scap load with him because his stride action isn't as long as Ruth's, yet his hand action was a little bit bigger. What does this mean? It means he's staying closed or loaded in his upper body longer. So the lower body begins the swing sequence. Easy to see there. The upper body is still resisting, pulling it tighter into the slot. You can really see that here in the curvature in the lower back, in the lines in the shirt of the, the torque he's creating in this portion of his body. That's tightening his turn and keeping the barrel flush still on this pitch away where he can hit it in the air the other way without rolling it over. I mentioned that Garrett created more of a horizontal and linear action in his lower body. He strides on line, but he creates a lot of horizontal force as he does so. One thing that we saw in some other video that we dug up on Garrett is that when his front foot dug in, you know, it landed normally is what a lot of hitters do at approximately a 45. But on balls that he would turn on and pull, he would end up taking that front shoe out of the ground as his hips continued to clear. So one of the things you can see on a ball that Garrett will hit to the pull side is that's what his finish will look like. It'll look like he's spinning off on one shoe. You go back and look at this swing again on a pitch that we assume is more middle in than the pitch previous. Is Now we do have that tighter turn still. You can see how connected he is tight to the rib cage, gets the barrel around now, and there's his classic low finish. The intent of these hitters from yesteryear is great because what I say to hitters today is you're hitting till you're not. So he has this same horizontal force going forward to the pitcher and watch how he shuts the upper body down late because he doesn't have to commit his hands because they're the last thing to get connected to his body as he stays loaded in his upper body longer. So I can be that aggressive to the pitcher. I could be that aggressive in my forward move and still not commit in my upper body. So you'll see this one here at the end, a very good example of another inside pitch for Lou. You see how he gets tight in this turn. Big tilt away, elbow slotting tight to the body, lower body leading that upper body. Tremendous torque there again once seen. Connected, you, you can almost see it here. We're about a frame away from getting to that same palm up, palm down position with the arms bent. That classic position that we saw with Ruth on his last swing over here. 
but we're just a frame away from seeing that. But it's the same thing. Tighten the turn on the inside pitch. Gehrig's classic low finish. And then we're finished up with the video. So what we're seeing here is two of the greatest players of all time creating force on two different types of vectors. Ruth, both horizontal and torque force. Had a little more length in the arc of his swing, but was able, because he was striding across his body and creating torque, to still send that angular velocity to the upper body and tighten the turn when he needed to on those inside pitches that he often hit for home runs. Garrick, on the other hand, was a little bit more linear and direct in his lower body move, but very aggressive in horizontal force. He posted up aggressively on that front leg, dug it into the ground, and created upper body resistance with a larger hand action. Thus, he tightened his turn. And when you look at his spray charts that we were able to dig up on BaseballReference.com, we could see that he did hit a lot more home runs to all fields versus Roos were dominant to the pull side. So a tighter, more connected turn would allow him to do damage to the other fields when balls were out away from him on home plate. So very different ways of creating speed, different results, both Hall of Famers.